Hello YouTube, XCT here. In this video we are going to use Sally's account to read the password of a group managed service account and then exploit both constraint and resource based constraint delegation to become domain admin. Alright, so last time we saw that Sally is in service account managers and service account managers can read the GMSA password of this specific account which is mfilesvc. And if you like look at the abuse info here you can see it's suggesting a specific tool, which is fine. It's written in C-sharp, so you can use execute assembly to run it. But we're going to run another one um, because I want to do it from Python this time. I'm going to use this tool here, GMSA Dumper. Um, it's really good, it works reliably. So let's just um, execute that one. Like this, you just give it the username, the password, the domain controller and the domain. It will dump all the accounts it has read access to. It's telling us um, that we can read M file SVC because we are in service account managers and then it's giving us here the NTLM hash of the account. So that's great. Let's see what this account is actually able to do. So let's just put it here. And you can see basically here that this account has a couple of SPNs, which are all starting with HTTP. And it's allowed to delegate to file one both for HTTP and for CIFS. And this is really great for us. We can basically use constraint delegation to get access to the file system of file one. And using the alt service, we can also like get a ticket for all the other services, which will basically allow us to PSX to the box or do WinRM or whatever we want to do, right? And then we have a couple of sessions here in Sliver. Um, I'm having a system session here on client of four. We got this in one of the other videos. So I'm going to use that one. And again, I'm using a session instead of a beacon just because for the video, uh, it would be annoying to wait all the time. All right, so what we'd want to do is we want to exploit constraint delegation with Rubius. And the way you do this is basically like this. Um, we do as for you, we give it the user. We give it the hash we just got, which is this one. So you can see I copied this for my notes, but because the password changes, this RC4 value is actually not valid anymore. So let's give it the right one. We want to impersonate the administrator user. Um, that's something you can do with constraint delegation. We give it the SPN of the account. We saw these in Bloodhound, right? And the thing I mentioned with the old service is that you can specify some other services that are not intended and it will just accept them. Let's run that. And you can see the whole thing was successful. We got some tickets here. And because I specified the PTT switch here, it was already passed into the session. So we now already have this ticket active. Um, to check that, we can just do a Ruby SK list here. And you can see that we actually are administrator on file one. And we got host, uh, CIFS, and HTTP. All right. With host and CFS, we should be able to just PSXX to the system and we can use Sliver as well for that. So I'm going to run it like this, um, PSXX, then we give it the path to our beacon on our system. That's the beacon I've been using throughout the whole lab. It's always the same. Um, one thing you really want to do is specify the service name and the service description because by default, these are both Sliver and yeah, you don't really want to, I guess, tell the SOC or the blue team that they're using Sliver, right? And of course the target, which is um, file1.shinra-dev.vl. And it's just doing the normal stuff pxxx does, right? It's uploading the binary and then it's creating a service that's starting the binary. And after a while, we should be able to get a beacon on the target system. Okay, we get an RPC error. Um, what well, this, I guess, is expected because we are starting a service that's probably not exactly behaving like a real service. Um, so we get a timeout here, but we still get the beacon. So now we can go here. And if we do info, we can see that this is indeed a beacon as system on file one. All right, now let's see if we can move from file one to the domain controller. Let's try to see if there's a path here. Let's do file one here at the start of the path and then DC at the end. And we can see there's indeed a path between these two machines. Um, there's a generic write from file one to DDC. And generic write basically means that you can write any attribute on the domain controller computer object. Let's see if it tells us anything we can do here. It's saying the same thing, right? We can basically write non-protected attributes, um, group member, service principal names. 
And it's also suggesting what I mentioned at the beginning, that we can use a resource-based constraint delegation attack. So let's do exactly that. So for resource-based constraint delegation, what we are doing is essentially creating a new computer object on the domain. Um, given that we can do it in this domain, uh, we saw like in one of the first videos that the machine quota is set to 10. So just any user on the domain can create 10 computer objects. And what we're going to do is we are setting the allowed to act on behalf of other identity attribute on the target, which is the domain controller to the security descriptor of the newly created computer object. Um, this basically means that the DC um, will trust the new computer object in a way that it can act as any domain user. And it is a bit confusing. Don't worry, we are going to do it step by step and actually exploit it. So I think Bloodhound told us to use Rubius, but we can also use this tool called Standin, which I really like. Um, it's also in C Sharp, so we can execute assembly it, and it makes it a bit easier to exploit um, certain things, including resource-based constraint delegation, which we have here. Um, there are also a lot of other things implemented here, and it's really worth to, to check it out. All right, so let's actually do the first step here, which is to create the computer object. And I'm using execute assembly here with the full path to the payload, which you can download from GitHub, right? And we are going to create a computer app object called supporter1. Remember, every domain user can do that. Um, we gotta save the password here, that's important, because we will need it later on. Okay, so now that we have the computer object, for one of the later commands, we are going to use Rubius, and we need the NTLM hash of this password. So let's actually get that one. Um, going to start the Python console here, and the way you basically do it is like this. Um, we're using hashlib, um, we're going to use an MD4 hash of the password that was just displayed to us, and then we get the hash here. Um, always a quick way to convert it, good to have in your notes. All right, now we got the hash of this password we got just displayed, and what we're going to do next is we need, first of all, the object sit of the computer account we just created. How do we use PowerShell from Sliver? Well, we can use NPS, and then we want get ad computer, um, identity and the account we just created, which is supporter1. And this gives us the sit, which we basically need in the next command. And then we are going to run standin again um, with the computer DC. And what this is doing is um, we're specifying the DC here because we are now using the generic write permissions we actually have to um, set this attribute um, I was mentioning earlier, which is allowed to act on behalf of other identity on the DC to the security descriptor of this new computer object we created. And here it's basically telling us that it worked. Uh, sit added to MSDS allowed to act on behalf of other identity. So this apparently worked. The only thing basically left to do here is to do Rubius to impersonate the user that we want on the DC. And we do this like this, Rubius as for you with the machine account, the domain, the hash we just calculated, right? We want to impersonate the administrator. We have to give it the correct SPN. And then um, again, the alt services, which are CIFS and host. So let's run this. And it's at least telling us it was successful. Let's do a Rubius K-list again. This doesn't look too bad. All right, let's do the final step here, which is basically psexec. So this is exactly what we did before, psexec with our beacon and some modified service name and description, um, this time just to the DC. So let's run this. All right, we get a new beacon. Let's check it out, uh, do an info here. And we are actually on the DC as system. And this is just another way you can get domain admin. Well, technically we are the domain controller now and not the domain admin yet, but I leave it to you to dump the credentials on the machine to get the domain admin hash or password. Thank you for watching and see you next time.